Hello, welcome to Puds and Pawns. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We just really like it. Today, I'm gonna to be restarting a series I did back in the board deck and dice days called Brewtube, but it's gonna be more focused and each little video is gonna be about one topic. And these might be some contentious topics as well, or just my opinions, but the whole idea is that we get maybe a little bit of a conversation going in the comments or through uh, social media, um, because I'm at an age where I found my opinion is not actually cemented as I was told it would be. I was always told when I'd get old, I would be stubborn and, well, that's true, but I would not be open to my mind change. But I find that actually my mind's changed quite a lot. There's lots to learn. The kind of social consciousness of the world moves at an incredibly fast rate. So you have to think about these things. So today I'm gonna to talk about something that uh, I would not normally have noticed why I think that's wrong that I would not normally have noticed, and uh, what perhaps we can do about it. The game I'm talking about today is Alma Mata, which is guilty of something that I think is called whitewashing. I do find it hard to stay up on some of the terms, and that's my bad, but basically there are no characters of colour in this game at all. Every character is white. Now, I didn't notice this. And of course, why would I notice this? When it comes to character selection and character identification, I, as a white male, have a pretty easy time of it. Indeed, when I used to choose video game characters back in the day and even today, there is always a character I can find who represents me visually. Now, uh, I can't remember in all honesty, what I would do if there was a choice between preset characters back in the day uh, and they were of different colours or even genders. Um, I'm, my kind of gut instinct, if I'm honest, is to say that I'd probably pick the one that I felt closest uh, resembled me, which would usually be the white guy. Uh, now, in my more kind of, <laughs> I don't know what state you'd call it, but my more enlightened uh, thought, well, th late 30s into my 40s. I'm only 40. Uh, thank you. I do look good for it. I uh, choose anything really. I just make a mad character and give them a stupid name. The only exception to that would be kind of sporting games where I feel like uh, I, uh, you know, like football, English football, and basketball, where I just I like character creation in my head is brilliant. But in my in reality, I just stick short hair, big ears, and a beard on a character who's white, and then I'm like, "Yeah, that's me, close enough." Um, and yeah, I don't. It's hard to look back and look at those decisions and view them with any sort of impartiality or idea about how my uh, subconscious was working. But the fact is that. That's probably because I never had to think about it. The options were always there. These days, I'm kind of less bothered about it representing me visually. Um, I kind of take the viewpoint that, uh, well, you know, like cyberpunk lets you do anything, almost. You can have penises, you can change the size of a penis. You can't change the size of the vagina, which is interesting. You can't have no genitals at all. You can't have no nips. So. Uh, on, on Cyberpunk, my current build is a um, uh, is a person of colour with no nips. So, you know, I'm not saying that represents me in some way. I'm saying that perhaps, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying the choice is there. And in the past, I would ignore that choice to be a character that represented me. Um, now, I've had that choice. A game like Alma Mater, uh, although you're not choosing to be one of these characters, removes that choice in a kind of haphazard way of, of just not presenting it. Um, and it kind of reminds me of, of kind of Guess Who, the kind of race thing with Guess Who where, and again, I don't know if it was an urban myth, but they would always say, there was a, you can find memes about it, like there was only one black character or, or something like that. I don't know if it's as bad as that, but it reminds me of that. And indeed, if you played Guess Who with the cast from Alma Mata, you would not have a great game. Hmm, are they white?
So, Alma Mater is game set in the 15th century university. Uh, you have these sets of Chancellor cards, which I'm not going to talk about uh, per se because they are all, I believe, I, I recognise some of the names. So, I think that these are people from history. There's Da Vinci um, and some other names I recognise. Agricola. Mm. Uh, Erasmus. So I'm not going to talk about, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to the Chancellor cards, which are all white. Are they all males? They are all white males. Okay. Now, when we come to the students represented in the game, you're running uh, your own university. We have four students of various uh, professions. They are kind of abstracted out because each uh, student represents a, a certain um, like this is the health one, isn't it? That's the health symbol. Um, uh, we have one one female, again, white, an arty one, uh, and the other two are white males. And then we come to the professors, and again, separated into different uh, things. Oh, all the females are apparently arty creative, arty creative types. We have, so one, one female professor, I think this is a female, I'm not sure about it, um, in the justice one, and then we have uh, two males there. So, best case, we have in both sets, the students and the professors, we have 25% female representation, uh, and possibly in the professors we have 50% female representation. I do I do think it's a female. I think it's meant to be a lady. She's a lady. Okay, so what's the problem or the issue with these being all white? Well, the first is a personal problem for me. I didn't notice. I read about this. I did not notice that all the characters were white. Um, some, uh, and for me, in this day and age, when we talk about the gaming, uh, board gaming community being inviting and welcoming, there should be some rep representation, I think, in almost every game where it's kind of practical, practical or, or not even practical, you know, there should be, should be some kind of representation, I feel. Um, people will say, well, this game is set in history, so that's what history was like. Well, I'm not sure that there was 50% representation or, or even 25 representation for for women in universities at that time. And if you go onto Board Game Geek, and I will link to it below, Thomas Lehman says, uh, who's the designer of Race for the Galaxy, Roll for the Galaxy, uh, Le Res Arcana, I was gonna say Lux, but it's Res Arcana. Um, he wrote a really good post about historically why it wasn't the case that there were just white people at universities at this point in history. So it's not actually the truth. This isn't um, a true reflection. Some people say, well, if it had people of colour in, it would be a lie. I've actually, I've actually heard that said and I'm like, but everything about this game is a lie in one sense. This is not how universities worked. You didn't get books and slide them across a bookcase. It's all abstracted out for the uh, benefit of the modern audience to be playable and to be fun. And the fact that I look at this and, you know, didn't even notice, I'm not sure that's a good thing. Would I, the interesting thing that I will never be able to answer is that would I have noticed if there hadn't been a white character in there? Um, and I would love to, I would love to have had that, uh, had that happen and, and see if I, I noticed. I can't, remember playing any games where it was all people of colour, so I can't honestly answer that. Um, so yeah, I, I think the history thing is a total cop-out really, uh, especially when you look at war games, which are often right touted as these historic games. Yet, can you show me a World War II game where the plight of the Indian soldiers that the British enlisted with promises of freedom for their colony uh, is laid out? Can you show me where the millions of Indian soldiers who died on the journey to 
Britain, before they even got to the war, is uh, mentioned. Can you show me where these Indian soldiers are represented at all in games that are touted as historically accurate? I've not seen it. I think one of the Undaunted might might hint at it. Um, I'm not too familiar with those. I just remember uh, seeing a video about that. So, yeah. So Tom Tom Thomas Lehman wrote to the publishers and 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 and, and they came back with a history response, which I think we can say at this point um, doesn't hold water. So what do we do? Do we boycott these games? Do we you know, I hesitate to put this on a scale of how bad is it because it depends for me. Like, I can't say how bad it is. It feels wrong, but for me to start categorising it on a level of uh, perhaps racism, I, don't, I honestly don't believe it was intentional. But that's part of the problem, isn't it? That it can be done so easily. I think... For me, in this case, the, the thing I will do is I will write to the publisher, I will, as well as producing this video, I will let them know that I was a little bit disappointed with the lack of representation in this. Uh, I don't think that the historical argument bears any weight, and I think I hope that in the future they will um, tailor their representation towards the modern audience. Put something in your in rule book about it if you want. You know, that while this period in history did not have uh, a lot of people of colour around, we have included them, them in our game for to take into account the modern audience. Fine! Would not have a problem with that. Um, remember that when people are saying, oh just play it, it's just a game, that works both ways. If it's just a game, why does it matter if there is representation in it? Why does it matter so much to you that there's no representation in this game for people of colour? Um, why is that something you want to argue against? That's the, those are the kind of things I've started thinking, you know. When I when my trained response to something like this, which would have been a few years ago, oh, well, you know, it's set in 50... It would have been the historical response, you know, well, there's plenty of games kind of thing. Start asking yourself why you think those things. It's something I try and do pretty constantly, even with my opinions now. So... I've kind of exhausted what I want to say on this. What do you think? Is Alma Mater doing anything wrong? Is it worse than than than, than perhaps what I've hinted at? Is it is it uh, something that is a mountain out of molehill? Um, what will writing to a publisher do? Is there anything else we can do? Um, certainly, in regards of. I, right, I'm not keeping this game, but that's because I don't like it and I didn't like it before I found out. Well, not, it's fine, but Coloma, uh, Coimbra is better and this was just too too much too much upkeep uh, and fiddliness for me. Um, but it's my decision was based before I knew about the issue of all white characters. So, yeah, that is Alma Mata. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, whether this is a problem, uh, whether I should be doing more, is there more I can do? I'm reading a lot, I'm trying to educate myself on what I can do and there will be some links in the description to some marvellous content creators who discuss this and issues like this uh, really, really well and in clear, understandable ways. In particular, I want to shout out Jason Perez of Shell Stories and his, uh, I think it's called Deep Trouble series. Um, you can find uh, some really good stuff about some of the um, issues with games like Puerto Rico and things like that. He hasn't done Alma Mater. I haven't asked him what he thinks, but uh, there you go. Uh, thanks very much for joining us here on Pads and Pawns. We are also on Twitch where we are a bit haphazard. We're trying to get into a regular schedule, but life, oh life, oh life. See you now.